This presentation will cover central dogma in biology. We're going to go over a summary of what that central dogma is, and then we'll look at some practice questions that are similar to what you might see on your biology praxis exam. Central dogma. The central dogma of biology is the process of DNA replication, transcription, and translation. These three processes are critical to living organisms as all life is based upon them. Nucleotides. Nucleic acids are composed of chains of nucleotides, which are monomers. Nucleotides are made up of a five carbon sugar here, a nitrogenous base, and a phosphate group. DNA is a nucleic acid made of two chains of nucleotides. So in each chain, the nucleotides covalently bond together, forming a strong sugar phosphate backbone. We see that here illustrated by the gray pentagons and blue circles. There are four types of nitrogenous bases. We'll call them bases from now on. Illustrated in red, purple, yellow, and green. The bases in one chain bond with the bases on the other chain with weak hydrogen bonds. The sugar is deoxyribose. DNA has two backbones forming a double helix. The nitrogenous bases connect the two backbones. The base pairs that bond with each other are called complementary bases. Adenine only bonds with thymine and guanine only binds with cytosine. So we'll always see A with T and G with C. Like DNA, RNA is composed of four nucleotides with a sugar phosphate backbone. You can see the sugar ring and the phosphate group here, and these are covalently connected. But there are some key differences. First, the sugar in RNA is ribose. Second, RNA is a single chain of nucleotides and has multiple shapes. And then instead of thymine, T, RNA has a base uracil, U, that bonds with adenine. So we get adenine bonded with uracil and guanine bonded with cytosine. Chromosomes. In the eukaryotic nucleus, DNA is configured into chromosomes. Prokaryotic DNA is circular and is located in the cytoplasm. Eukaryotic DNA is tightly wound around proteins called histones, like thread wrapped around a spool. The combination of eight histones and DNA is called a nucleosome. Nucleosomes are further compacted into a fiber called chromatin. Chromosomal structure. During cell division, DNA and chromatin is further tightly wound or condensed into the characteristic structure shown. A condensed chromosome contains two sister chromatids, which are identical copies of each other. Sister chromatids are held together at the centromere. The chromosomal ends are called telomeres. DNA replication. The first step in replication is to separate the two DNA strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the bases, facilitated by the enzyme helicase. Each strand provides a template for creating a complementary strand of bases. DNA nucleotide monomers are made ahead of time and stored in the cell. They are attracted to the newly exposed complementary bases in the template DNA strands. The reactions are catalyzed by the enzyme DNA polymerase. The strands are joined together resulting in the formation of two DNA molecules identical to the original. Many other enzymes are used during the process. Semi-conservative replication. The light green arrows show the direction that the bases are being added to the original strand in opposite directions. 
nucleotides can only be added to the OH end or the three prime end of each original strand. The added nucleotides will bond with their five prime carbon to the three prime carbon location on the original strand. The new strands are built in the five prime to three prime direction. Since each new DNA molecule has one strand from the original molecule, it is called semi-conservative replication. Transcription. Transcription is the process by which RNA strands are synthesized from DNA strands. The DNA sequence of nucleotides is rewritten into the RNA sequence of nucleotides. DNA has two strands. The template strand is used as the template for the enzyme RNA polymerase that creates the mRNA molecule. mRNA takes the information from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, where the ribosomes use it to create proteins. The non-template coding strand is complementary to the template strand and matches the mRNA molecule with the exception of T being replaced by U. Transcription has three steps. Initiation. RNA polymerase attaches to the promoter region on the template strand of the DNA at the beginning of the gene that it is copying. Each gene has its own promoter. The promoter is a specific sequence of bases that the RNA polymerase recognizes. Elongation. RNA polymerase runs down the DNA template strand, reading the bases and bringing in new RNA nucleotides with the complementary bases. RNA polymerase unwinds the DNA as it runs down the DNA. Termination. When RNA polymerase reaches the termination sequence on the DNA, it stops transcription. RNA polymerase falls off the DNA, the new RNA strand separates from the DNA, and the DNA recoils into a helix. mRNA processing. After transcription of eukaryotic DNA, the transcript is known as pre-mRNA. Enzymes in the nucleus modify pre-mRNA before the genetic messages are sent to the cytoplasm. This is known as mRNA processing. Both ends of the pre-mRNA are altered, and some interior sequences of pre-mRNA may be cut out and other parts spliced together. The end modifications facilitate the export of mRNA from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, protects mRNA from hydrolytic enzymes in the cytoplasm, and helps ribosomes attach to the mRNA. The five prime end of the pre-mRNA receives a five prime cap or a GTP cap. The three prime end of the pre-mRNA gets a poly A tail, a series of adenosine A nucleotides during the polyadenylation process. mRNA splicing. Most eukaryotic genes and their RNA transcripts have long non-coding stretches of nucleotides that lie between coding regions. These non-coding regions are called intervening sequences or introns. You can see them here in the light pinkish red color. The other re regions are called exons because they are eventually expressed. They're usually translated into amino acid sequences. mRNA splicing, also called RNA splicing, removes introns and joins exons, creating an mRNA molecule, as you see here, with a continuous coding sequence. This is an example of pre-mRNA becoming a final transcript. So we have our DNA genome. We use transcription to get our primary RNA transcript. In blue are the introns, in orange are the exons. Then we have the addition of the five prime cap on the five prime end and the poly A tail on the three prime end. 
then the splicing or removal of the introns. So you can see um, from here to here, it was the removal of five introns, and then there are two more remaining. So in a second step from here to here are the removal of two additional, two additional introns via mRNA splicing. And now we have our mature mRNA with 1,872 bases that is exported to the cytoplasm. After transcription, the mRNA message is read in three letter words called codons. So you can see there's this series of three nucleotides, GCU is codon one, ACG is codon two, and so on. Each codon codes for an amino acid or tells the process to stop. There are 64 codons but only 20 amino acids, because some codons code for the same amino acid. The next step is translation. The universal genetic code. So remember, we're talking about a three-letter code. So the first letter could be any one of these four bases, U, C, A, or G. The second letter could be any one of these four bases, U, C, A, or G. And the third letter could be any one of those four bases, U, C, A, or G. That's how we get a total of 64 possible codon combinations. 61 of the codons code for an amino acid. You can see the different amino acids here. There are three stop codons. So if you take a look, one of them is right here, U, G, A is a stop codon, and so are UAA and UAG. One codes for the methionine amino acid, and that's AUG. That's our start codon. Methionine is always the first amino acid in a new polypeptide. This is called a universal code because all life uses the same genetic code, from the smallest bacteria or virus to the largest animal or tree. Translation. Translation is the process by which RNA molecules are read to build polypeptides, less than 50 amino acids, and proteins, more than 50 amino acids. There are three main types of RNA used in translation, and they are all created in the nucleus. Messenger RNA, or mRNA, is the final product of transcription. It carries the DNA genetic message into the cytoplasm. Ribosomal RNA, rRNA, in addition to many additional proteins, rRNA makes the ribosome. The ribosome catalyzes translation that makes covalent polypeptide bonds between the amino acids, building the protein and transfer RNA, tRNA, carries amino acids to the ribosome where they are bonded together by rRNA. Similar to transcription, translation has three steps. Initiation, an initiation complex for translation forms by the assembly of the ribosomal subunits and initiator tRNA, the one that contains the methionine, at the start codon AUG on the mRNA. Elongation, the ribosome attracts tRNAs containing specific amino acids by matching the tRNA anticodon to the complementary mRNA codon. After each amino acid is brought in, the ribosome links them together using peptide bonds and then its tRNA is released. The ribosome then moves down one codon at a time and repeats the process over and over, forming a new protein. Termination. At a stop codon, and there are three of them, UAA, UAG, or UGA, a release factor reads the triplet and polypeptide synthesis ends. The polypeptide is released from the tRNA the tRNA is released from the ribosome, and the two ribosomal subunits separate from the mRNA. The product of one round of translation is a protein with a primary structure. 
It will not be a functional protein until it is folded to its final shape. It spontaneously folds back on itself as it exits the ribosome, assuming its secondary structure of alpha helix and or beta pleated sheets. Its tertiary and quaternary structures may require the help of enzymes. Controlling gene expression. Individual cells respond to environmental change by regulating their gene expression. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes have evolved different mechanisms for regulating their gene expression. Prokaryotes regulate gene expression in only one part of the transcription process. Eukaryotes have multiple places to regulate gene expression, both in transcription and translation. Regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes. Individual prokaryotes respond to environmental change such as varying food sources, by regulating their gene expression. The control takes place during transcription. For example, when lactose is present, bacteria can freely transcribe the genes coding for the enzymes in charge of breaking down this sugary source of food. However, when lactose is absent, the transcription of these genes is physically blocked. The enzymes that process lactose do not get synthesized. This mechanism saves the bacterial cell both energy and materials. Operons. In prokaryotes, genes are clustered into operons within the chromosome. Operons consist of three parts. Promoter, RNA polymerase bonds to this region. As you can see the promoter region here. The operator here either blocks or supports the RNA polymerase and the genes, which codes for the specific protein required by the cell. So here are the genes. And this entire thing is the operon. The regulatory gene right here produces proteins that instruct the operator to either block or support the bonding of RNA polymerase to the promoter. Regulatory proteins. Regulatory genes produce two types of regulatory proteins. Repressor proteins, which are negative regulation. Transcription occurs when the protein is inactive by blocking RNA polymerase from bonding to the promoter region. And activator protein, positive regulation. Transcription occurs when the protein is active by allowing RNA polymerase to bond to the promoter region. Regulatory proteins are known as allosteric. They only become active or inactive when they bind to the operator. Operon types. A repressible operon is one that is usually on. When a repressor binds to an operator, then transcription is shut off. The TRP operon for tryptophan synthesis is a repressible operon. The TRP operon codes for a number of genes responsible for the production of the amino acid tryptophan. An inducible operon is one that is usually off. A molecule called an inducer inactivates the repressor and turns on transcription. An example of an inducible operon is the LAC operon, which contains genes coding for enzymes that break down lactose into glucose so the bacteria can use it for energy. If no lactose is present, then no enzymes need to be made. The bacteria saves energy this way. In this operon, the lactose molecule is the inducer. Regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are more complex than prokaryotes, so their methods of gene expression are more complex. These complexities include, not only are eukaryotes multicellular, there are multiple types of cells, each requiring a different regulation mechanism. DNA chromosomes are much larger and more complex than prokaryotic chromosomes. In addition, genes for similar functions can be found on different chromosomes and are harder to get to because of the double helix. In prokaryotes, transcription and translation occur in the same place, the cytoplasm. Transcription occurs in the eukaryote nucleus and translation occurs in the eukaryote cytoplasm. This requires different regulation schemes. Cell differentiation. 
Every cell in a multicellular eukaryote contains the same genome. In other words, every cell in an organism has all the genes necessary to make all of its parts. But different genes are expressed for tissue cells and tissue-specific proteins, causing them to look and function differently, becoming more specific cells. Cell differentiation. Mathematically, cell differentiation can be thought of in terms of how many genes can be expressed over time. The percentage of genes in a cell's genome that it can express decreases as the cell matures. Transcription factors. The regulation of gene expression can be caused by groups of genes that can be influenced by the same transcription factors. Transcription factors are special proteins that either enable or prevent the transcription process from starting. The transcription factors either enable or prevent RNA polymerase from attaching to the promoter region, which is upstream and adjacent to the gene being transcribed. When the factors attach to enhancers, that can be thousands of nucleotides away from the gene to be transcribed. The factors are called activators. Mutations. A mutation is a permanent change in the DNA sequence of a gene. Mutations in a gene's DNA sequence can alter the amino acid sequence of the protein encoded by the gene. Somatic mutations occur in somatic body cells and are passed on by mitosis, but not to sexually produced offspring. Germline mutations occur in germ cell line cells that give rise to gametes, via meiosis. A gamete with a mutation passes it on to the new organism at fertilization. Mutations may or may not affect the phenotype. Mutations are the primary source of genetic variation. Mitosis and meiosis will be covered in more detail in a following unit. Types of mutations. Point mutations occur when one or more nucleotide bases are changed, added, or deleted. Substitution. One nucleotide is replaced with another, resulting in an incorrect amino acid sequence. Insertion. DNA sequence changed by the insertion of at least one nucleotide into the gene. Deletion. DNA sequence changed by the deletion of at least one nucleotide from the gene. Point mutations may result in proteins that are less efficient, but maintain enough function that the phenotype is not changed. Inversion mutations. A section of the DNA breaks away from the chromosome and then reconnects with it in reversed order. Or silent mutations, which has no effect on the protein coded for by the gene. Mutation causes. A mutagen is a physical or chemical agent that can change the DNA of an organism and thus increases the frequency of mutations. Mutagens include ionizing radiation like x-rays or gamma rays, ultraviolet waves like sunlight, alkaloid plants like tobacco, the coca plant, and the poppy plant, sodium azide, a component in many car airbags, and benzene, a solvent used in plastics and synthetic rubber. Recombination are exchanges of DNA between chromosomes during mitosis or meiosis, such as crossing over, that leads to daughter cells having DNA that is different than either parent's DNA. This increases genetic diversity, but can cause mutations if, these are, if there are errors in the process. Epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. Unlike genetic changes, epigenetic changes are reversible and do not change your DNA sequence, but they can change how your body reads a DNA sequence.